Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be talking about Unit 5, Topic 5 of AP Psychology. Forgetting and memory distortion. Starting with the information processing model again, we can see how long-term memories are created and how sometimes we can struggle to remember certain memories or forget memories entirely. This normally happens in one of three places. The first one being the encoding process, the second being our long-term memory itself, and the last being with the retrieval process. Now one thing I want to highlight here is it's not considered forgetting if you are not paying attention and did not correctly learn the information because of your lack of focus. For example, if while watching these videos or listening in class, you're also thinking about what you're going to eat for lunch or you're texting on your phone, you're not learning the information in the first place. Going back to problems with encoding, if we do not encode information correctly, then we will not be able to recall the information later. The information might have been in our working memory, but we failed to correctly encode it and move the information into our long-term memory. As we get older, the encoding process slows down and it can be more difficult to efficiently efficiently encode new information. Moving into our long-term memory, we can see that over time, certain stored memories can decay. For example, maybe you took a French course in your early years of school, but stopped taking classes in college and stopped practicing the language altogether. Over time, you'll be able to see your ability to remember the information you learned from class decline, and you may completely forget about what you learned about the language. When talking about forgetting, we can also look at Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. You can see from the chart that originally you will forget quite a bit of information. However, we see that information you do remember after the first couple of years sticks with you for the long term. This is why you may forget most of the things you learned from your intro to French class, but still remember a couple specific words or phrases. Ebbinghaus looked at learning and memory by conducting an experiment where he tried to learn nonsense syllables. He found that the more he practiced the list of nonsense syllables on the first day, the less time was required for him to relearn it on the second day. There was a negative correlation with the amount of time studying and rehearsing the information and the time needed for relearning. When he spaced his studying out, utilizing the spacing effect, he was able to retain more and more information. Lastly, we have the retrieval failure. This happens because we have stored memories in our long-term memory, but we're unable to properly retrieve them. Maybe you've had a situation where someone has been trying to explain a movie, but can't remember the name of that particular movie. You know the name of the movie, but for the life of you, you can't think of it. It's just right on the tip of your tongue. This would be an example of a retrieval failure. Connecting back to some of our previously learned concepts, we can see that when you use distributed practice, you increase your ability to remember information. Instead of us cramming all the information into one night, we can space our studying out, and we can also overlearn the information, which is when we continue to practice the rehearsal of material even after you've mastered it. This decreases the chance of forgetting the information and counters the forgetting curve. Now over the course of a lifetime, you'll learn thousands upon thousands of different bits of information. And while your long-term memory does not have a storage capacity, Capacity, the brain wants to keep things organized. Sometimes we can see that old information you know may make it difficult to remember new information. This is known as proactive interference. It's forward acting. This new information is harder to access because of previously learned information. For example, if you're ever in a play and you're trying to recite your lines, but you keep thinking about the lines from your past play. Or if you create a new password for your email, but you keep remembering your old password instead. On the other hand, there is also retroactive interference, which is backward acting. This is when new information replaces places or disrupts the ability to recall old information. For example, when you learn a new password, you may completely forget the old password. Or in listening to a parody song, you might start to remember the parody lyrics instead of the original lyrics. Fun fact, if you want to try and limit the amount of retroactive interference, it helps to review the information about an hour or so before bed. Researchers John Jenkins and Carl Dallebach discovered this when conducting an experiment where people had to learn nonsense syllables and then tried to recall them after being up for eight hours or being asleep. What they discovered was the people who went to sleep were better at recalling the information compared to the people who were awake. Just one of the few reasons why it's so important to always get a good night's sleep before a test or any big life event. Now when looking at memory, we can also see memory loss which happens due to amnesia. This is when a person either temporarily or permanently loses parts of their memory. Now there are different types of amnesia that can impact a person. Anterior grade amnesia is when a person can no longer form new memories. This type of amnesia almost always involves something happening to the hippocampus. Retrograde amnesia is when a person can no longer retrieve past information. This could occur 
occur because of a blow to your head, which caused you to forget recent memories. There is also source amnesia, which is when you cannot remember where you heard the information. For example, if you heard a funny story from someone and then later you tell them the story that they told you. Now, sometimes we do not have a problem with recalling a memory or information, but instead have a problem with correctly remembering the information. This can happen for a variety of different reasons. One of the reasons is because every time you access or recall a memory, you alter it ever so slightly. Think of your memories almost like a discussion board or a Wikipedia page. They can always be revised. This process of altering our memories is known as reconsolidation. This is when our memories that have been retrieved are altered before being stored again. This is just one of the reasons why that friend who loves to tell stories continuously changes the story or hypes the story up a little bit each time. This can also happen to the misinformation effect, which is when misleading information distorts a person's memory of an event. This effect can sometimes happen if people are asked leading questions or shown false information that may coincide with a particular memory. For example, take five seconds and look at this photo. All right, can you just tell me how tall the person in the purple shirt was, or can you describe the large car on the side of the road? These questions are worded in a way that gets you to think about the picture in a particular manner. The reality is there was no person in a purple shirt, and the car on the side was definitely not large. But by asking how tall a person was, or how large a car was, you might have started to skew your answer to the taller or larger side. And asking you about a person with a purple shirt may have got you to think there was a person in the photo with a purple shirt. By adding misinformation, into the questions, it changes or alters the memory. And if you were watching this video with your friends and they agreed right away, oh yeah, I saw the person with the purple shirt, that would further distort the memory. At the end of the day, if you want to improve your memory, you need to make sure you get enough sleep. Practice concepts that you've learned by testing yourself. Spread your studying out over a period of time. Make sure you connect the material to important events or ideas in your own life. Use different cues such as retrieval cues, mnemonic devices, and try to minimize proactive and retroactive interference. Speaking of improving your memory, let's practice the testing effect by having you answer the questions on the screen and checking your answers in the comment section down below. Also, if you're struggling with AP Psychology and need some more help, make sure you check out my ultimate review packet. You can find a link in the description of the video. The packet has information on every single unit in AP Psychology. It's got practice quizzes, tests, and much, much more. It's a great resource that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, that's all we have for today. I'm Mr. Sin. If you found value in this video, consider subscribing. And of course, I'll see you next time online.